Welcome back to H20 Special Relativity. We want to continue our discussion of galactic space travel. Uh, here, the situation is slightly modified from the previous one. We still have Alice being our ground control and Bob riding on a spacecraft in order to explore planetary systems and solar systems. This situation is different in the sense that the spacecraft has an escape rod. So it's able to you know, send probes to planets in order to study them. And so in this specific case, the velocity of this escape rod is UB, delta XB over delta PB as measured in Bob's reference frame. The direction of this velocity is the same as the, direct, uh, the direction of Bob's spacecraft. We're looking in longitudinal direction. Again, as a reminder, velocity is distance over time or delta X over delta P. So the question now is, what does Alice observe? So this is an activity you should try to work out yourself. I stop the video, I'll just continue here. So if you calculate now the velocity as seen by Alice, um, delta x a over delta t a, that's given by gamma times delta, we just used Lorentz transformation, gamma times delta x b plus v times delta t b over gamma times delta t b plus v over c squared delta xb. So we can cancel the gammas and take out delta tb out of the brackets and then we find ub plus v over 1 plus v c square over c square ub. So this looks like an addition of velocities with a correction factor 1 plus v over c square ub. Good. So does this make sense? So whenever we have a calculation like this we should check that it, it actually works out that extreme cases are uh, preserved and that units work out. So again, the units work out here uh, on both sides, we find meter per second, the unit of velocity. If you check now what happens if you set UB equal to zero, meaning that the escape rod is at rest with no velocity with respect to Bob's reference frame. In that case, we find that UA is equal to V, exactly the velocity difference, the relative velocity between those two reference frames. If that velocity is zero, we find ua equal to ub. Again, that's expected. If Bob and Alice are in the same reference frame and they observe the same escape rod, they better measure the same velocity. And lastly, if you know, instead of having an escape rod, we send the beam of light out, which has the speed, beam of light has the speed of light, ub equal to c, we find that the velocity by observed by Alice is also c. Which brings us to an interesting point here. Uh, yes, we still add velocities with a little bit of a relativistic correction, but we will never get larger velocities of the speed of light. So the speed of light is a absolute speed limit. Let's analyze this a little bit more um, in the context of our light clocks. So what now happens if the velocity is equal to c is that gamma goes to infinite. And in the, in the context of the light clock, you can notice that you know, the upper mirror is, can never be reached. It's moving with the speed of light, the same velocity as the light itself. So light never able to reach this, the clock will stop. All right, so there's an absolute limit uh, of velocity is the speed of light. Okay, so now, so far we discussed only velocities in the direction in which the two ref reference frame uh, move or the second reference frame move with respect to the first one. What now happens if we consider perpendicular velocities? So in this case, Bob spacecraft, um, this escape rod goes up. You know, maybe it's just, you know, you're circling a planet or you're just approaching the planet and you just want to, want to probe that, that planet specifically. So here we want to work out the example in which the perpendicular velocity is not zero, but the longitudinal velocity is zero. So what does Alice observe? So we do this as a concept question, which of the four answers is correct? Is the velocity unchanged because we are studying perpendicular velocity? Uh, is the velocity smaller, larger, or you don't know because we actually have to figure it out, work it out. Okay, so the velocity as observed by Alice 
is actually the absolute value is smaller than the one observed by, by Bob. We can do the very same calculation. So we have UBY is delta YB over delta TB. And then for Alice, this is UAY delta YA over delta TB. So the Y component, the length measured in Y direction between Bob and Alice is invariant as we saw in the previous section. But the time is not. So we do have to do the Lorentz transformation of delta TA and find that in the case where the UB X is equal to zero, that we just have to divide UB Y over gamma. Situation is a little bit more involved and there's also a longitudinal velocity, but you see here how this would unfold. So two was the correct answer here. So while the lengths in longitudinal directions are invariant, the velocities are not, and that's because time is suspect, time needs to be corrected in the two reference lengths. <laughs>